Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video this evening. So I hope that you have been enjoying your day, and we're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the Caribbean. So there is Invest 97L still helping to induce a lot of heavy rain across portions of Central America, along with a front in the area. It has stalled there and is producing some activity. And we'll also be talking about what models are expecting. So there is somewhat of an increase in confidence about something potentially developing as we head toward the mid part of October, uh, November rather in the Caribbean. So we'll be talking about that in this update. And also before I get into it, are you wondering whether or not we'll see any chilly conditions or experience any chilly conditions here in the Caribbean this coming winter? Well, I have uploaded a forecast to my second channel, Weather Extras. It is linked down in the comments, the pinned comment down below. That link, when you tap on it, it takes you straight to that video. And and it not only gives merely a forecast, but I also go into details to try to break down what to expect as much as I can. So I hope that you enjoyed that video. You can go ahead and check it out after watching this one. So let's get straight into it. We're seeing all this activity associated with the disturbance in this 97L. And it is about to make its way inland, uh, the disturbance in and of itself. But uh, all this activity has been producing a lot of heavy rains across portions of Central America. There have been many instances of significant flooding, maybe even some mudslides and landslides induced as a result of all this rainfall coupled with that rain due to the front which has stalled in the area. Now that front is also impacting portions of Cuba, going up to the Bahamas and even for South Florida as as well but for the majority of the Bahamian Islands we're not seeing where there's anything too crazy happening same story as we head toward the Turks and Caicos Islands portions of eastern Cuba the Cayman Islands maybe an occasional passing shower or so at the most for most of Jamaica there hasn't been much activity but uh, there has been some rainfall and thunderstorms popping up across some parishes this afternoon not for the majority of us though as we head toward Hispaniola and even to Puerto Rico the Virgin Islands and the northern Leeward Islands and Guela St. Martin St. Barthes Delmi, Antigua, Barbuda, Seba, St. Eustatius, St. Kitts and Nevis, and maybe even for Guadeloupe and Dominica, parts of Dominica, there hasn't been a whole lot happening today. Maybe some showers still uh, affecting some of these areas, especially for Trinidad. This afternoon, some thunderstorms were even popping up and uh, going over into Barbados as well. For the ABC Islands at the moment, not seeing anything too crazy. And across portions of North and South America, there is some thunderstorm development. So that is what is going on this evening, guys. Nothing too too crazy. Uh, the main feature in the Caribbean right now is really Invest 97L and all that activity that it is producing, which will continue to impact Central America over the next couple of days. So that major flooding across some areas, if there is an instance of a lot of heavy rains, if there is another major downpour, that could enhance the flooding and put many lives at risk. So please stay safe as best as you can and I'll keep you posted. Now we're going to quickly take a look at what models have to show and then we're going to be looking at the sea surface temperature map. So first up, we have the GFS model, and this is for next weekend on Saturday, the 11th of November. There we can see that the model is showing that rainfall increase marked by those shades of greens go into those yellows and those reds. That is indicative of all that moisture, the precipitation rate in the area. So there we see that 1000 millibar low pressure area. Now, when we see those squiggly lines being in a circular manner, that is representative of a tropical cyclone within the Caribbean here. As we head out, going to Tuesday, November 14th, the GFS is expecting that we will see a tropical storm uh, developing and making its way toward the northwest, moving into the northwestern Caribbean just offshore of the Yucatan here. GFS has been hinting at development. At one point, it was even showing a hurricane or even a major hurricane in the area, which I'm not expecting as of right now. I mean, development is certainly possible, but in terms of seeing something very strong, uh, that would need the right conditions. And one of those major fuels really is the amount of heat energy available for the system, those very warm waters. But it is important to know that this is not a guarantee. But as I said, there is some increase in confidence about this happening, but things can change very quickly. By the next couple of days, it could be a completely different expectation. So we'll have to keep our eyes on what is happening, but going on to the Euro model now. So here we are. This is as we head out to Friday of next week. So there we see that increase in moisture in the central Caribbean headed toward the Western Caribbean. And the Euro is showing something quite interesting here. This is as we head out to Monday the 13th of November. So it has all that activity continuing to the Northwest. A bit of a 
similar story compared to GFS here, but the difference is that the euro is not showing a developed system at the time. It is showing all that increase in moisture, and we could see another case of what is currently happening across Central America with all that activity, that disorganized activity impacting the area with a lot of heavy rain. And I'll also notice all that moisture in the vicinity of southern Texas as well. So uh, with the tail of a front remaining in the area, it may try to gather some moisture before making its way in. And then as we head to our Tuesday, the 14th of the month, there we see all of that activity making its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Still nothing defined at that point. Let's head on to the Canadian model. This is as we head out again to Friday the 10th. We're seeing all that increase in moisture, but uh, the Canadian has all this activity drifting into Central America and doesn't really show much as we head out to Tuesday the 14th. This is what we're seeing. So an increase in moisture in the area. And with that, we could see development if the conditions are conducive. The ICOM model is not showing a whole lot for next Friday, but eventually as we head out to Sunday the 12th of November, there's all that moisture drifting into Central America but there we see it again so we could see the tail of one of these fronts moving out at that time actually try to get in some moisture and try to uh, develop some activity so we'll definitely have to be watching out for that but as it relates to any source of rapid intensification in the Gulf I'm not really expecting that why let's go ahead and look at the sea surface temperature map now so take a look at this there is a cool down happening I mean naturally because we're heading into the end of the hurricane season the final couple weeks of the hurricane season not that we can't see anything after that time because there certainly has been and I would not say that can't happen this year especially with those very warm waters in the Caribbean but uh, we can see that there is a cool down happening we're seeing more of these shades of greens across the northern Gulf and uh, tropical cyclones would require around 26 degrees Celsius in order to develop and uh, get those sufficient thunderstorms and we're seeing 23 25 24 degrees across the northern Gulf so for the Gulf Coast states of the US I wouldn't be too concerned about rapid intensification but at the same time if there should actually be something trying to consolidate even if it does not develop and it just consists of loss of disorganized showers and thunderstorms that can still pack a punch in terms of unleashing flooding across some areas so there we can see it guys there we have seen it models are expecting that we may see something try to develop they're all showing that increase in moisture which would lead to that GFS is really the only model showing a defined system in the Northwest Caribbean we're seeing Euro showing uh, an area of a lot of moisture taking a similar path to that which the uh, GFS is expecting in the Caribbean. So I will keep you guys posted and let's see how this evolves as we head throughout this week. But uh, that's definitely an area to look for developing systems, especially at this time of the year. So I'll keep you guys posted. And that is pretty much it for now. So I hope you found this video to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I can. And remember to always be with the wise.